Hey, it's Andrew at BTO Range here in Conroe, Texas. Welcome back. Today, we've got a little 1911 pistol on the bench that a customer turned in having uh, some problems with uh, hammer fall, but not igniting the primer. He's not getting uh, primer strikes, even any light indentations on the primer, but it's only happening occasionally. And on this Kimber pistol, we're kind of suspecting the firing pin safety or the firing pin lock. So we're going to take this gun apart. Uh, we're going to go ahead and strip it all the way down because the, the Kimber system is a little bit different uh, than the Colt system, the way they operate the firing pin lock. So we're going to take it apart and uh, and see what's uh, going on and, and give you some indication as to what, make, what makes these Kimbers run. So uh, 1911 semi-automatic pistol, single action only, 45 ACP. We're gonna clear the gun first, just like we would any other semi-automatic. We're gonna remove the magazine, set it off to the side. And we're gonna run the slide back and forth to make sure our chamber's clear. So that way we have a clear pistol. So on this five inch 1911, in the Kimber, there is a bushing here, uh, a typical uh, bushing and recoil spring plug assembly. So the way I like to do it is I'll pull the hammer back, run the safety up so it locks the slide, so the slide can't go to the rear, and I'll use my bushing wrench And you have to watch it, watch that spring, so I always put my hand over it to control it. And we can set that off to the side, remove the recoil spring plug. Now we can release the thumb safety, pull the slide back to where that slide release is lined up with the notch in the slide, push that up from the off side, remove the slide lock from the frame. Now we can remove the entire slide from the frame, the entire slide assembly. In order to pull the recoil spring guide out, this full length recoil spring guide, we need to remove the recoil spring, remove the recoil spring guide, rotate the bushing to that position, and now we can remove this entire bushing and barrel out of the front. So, the part that we're the part that we're concerned with is this part right here. That's the firing pin lock. That that's actually a positive lock that prevents the firing pin from moving forward to, through the breech phase. So in order to get that out, we've got to remove the firing pin. So to do that, we're going to with our thumb push the firing pin lock in. We're going to compress the firing pin through the shield there, and then we're going to just. Pull this out, and we're going to control this firing pin. Remove the firing pin and spring that way. And now, I don't know if you can see it through here. You may be able to see it better through here if we, if we get close here. So if you look through that firing pin channel, you can see the firing pin block uh, occluding that channel. And I can actually, if I push that up, you can see it clears out of the way. And that's what allows the firing pin to move freely forward when the hammer strikes it. So what's pushing that up into the slide is this little uh, lever right here. And that lever is activated by depressing the grip safety. If you can see it moving up. When you depress the grip safety on the Kimber 1911, this in turn pushes up on that firing pin lock in the slide, clears it out of the way to allow the firing pin to go forward. Now that's different than the Colt system, the Colt Series 80 system. This, this is not a Series 80 gun. Series 80 is kind of a specific thing to Colt. Uh, the Colt has two levers one that is operated by the trigger and that interacts with a lever that's mounted here in the side of the frame that levers up and pushes uh, the corresponding firing pin lock in the slide. So on the Colt, the firing pin lock's activated by the trigger pull, but not so on a Kimber. On a Kimber, it's activated by the grip safety. So when you have that Kimber pistol that, as was reported with this pistol, occasionally uh, fails to hit the 
primer with the hammer, sometimes it does, sometimes it, it doesn't, the first thing to uh, wonder about is how, how well of a grip, uh, if we have a high thumb grip, they may not be, they may not be activating the grip safety enough to push this far enough uh, up to clear the firing pin lock to allow the firing pin to go forward. So that's the first thing to do is consider, is, is it a grip issue? Now, on most 1911s, grip safety uh, issues are resolved by the, uh, the grip safeties that have what is called a memory bump right here on the, uh, on, on the bottom end of the grip safety. But on the Kimber, this grip safety, although it doesn't have a bump, it actually sticks out far about the same size. So it effectively is a firing pin bump without it being the, the slim here and the big bump here. So um, this particular customer shoots a lot of 1911s, so I doubt uh, that he has a grip issue. He has other Kimber 1911s that he shoots without any difficulty. So we, um, our goal is going to be to, to pull this frame apart and then uh, we're gonna replace both the firing pin lock and, and this uh, lever in, in this gun here. It's an older, it's an older Kimber, and uh, we just may have some wear on those parts. So uh, let's pull this frame apart real quick. So the first thing we're gonna do is pull these grips on the Kimber. These are Allen's. And different, uh, different guns have different grip screws. I mean, the grip screw pitch is typically the same, but some may be Allen, some may be Torx head, some may be slotted screws. The bottom of the grip panels may be uh, different depending on whether they have a magwell or not. So they may be cut for that magwell. And the reason we're gonna pull these is we need to get to this mainspring housing pin underneath here to pull this frame apart with. And there are some 1911s that with the grips on, you can access the pin that we're about to, that we're about to drive out. You still want to remove the grip panels so that you don't inadvertently mar or damage the grip panels when you're driving this mainspring housing pin out. Not having fingernails can be a problem, so we'll just pop it out that way. VZ grips on this Kimber, they're, they're very nice. Now, one thing you wanna watch out for on the 1911s, particularly older guns, these grip screw bushings are threaded into the frame and they're staked from the opposite side. So occasionally through wear or maybe an over-tightened or rusted in or God forbid lock tighted grip screw, when you turn the grip screw out, sometimes you pull the bushing out with it. Um, these are extremely fine threads. If they get stripped out, what we have to do is put in oversized grip screw bushings that we'll have to go in there and actually re-tap those to the slightly larger size and put in a special oversized grip bushing to, to re-establish that. You see that more with aluminum frame guns and steel frame guns, but uh, it can happen. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this mainspring housing pin. This little pin right here. So it's got a like a little divot in one side that's going to allow us to get there to it. So, and you can you don't have to have a bench block. You can do it with a roll of tape or whatever you're going to use. So that's out. With this hammer back, this is pushing the mainspring is in here. So with the hammer back, the strut is pushing against uh, against the mainspring here. So if I move, it's going to be hard to move this punch out of the way because there's pressure on that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna release the hammer. That's gonna release a lot of the pressure on here. It's, there's still a little bit of spring tension. And now I can remove this mainspring housing. So the, the funnel on this mainspring housing is attached by this, this set screw here on the bottom. And if you wanted to, if you wanted to take this down further, you can push this pin out from, 
from the outside to the inside, and that'll release the mainspring and the two plungers on the inside. Now, if you're gonna do this with a Kimber or with a later Colt, uh, be very careful because on those guns, this part is plastic. Now, on, on this particular Kimber, this part is metal, so it's a little bit easier and forgiving, but it's very, very thin right here where this pin goes through. And uh, on the plastic mainspring housing, those are very easy to damage, and you end up having to replace that if you damage it. So we're gonna lay that off to the side. Now we're gonna pull this thumb safety. This is a, sing a single-sided thumb safety, so it's gonna be relatively easy. With the hammer cocked, we're gonna bring that to the midway point. And from this, this side, we're gonna kinda give it a little push to clear it. Now, this plunger, there's a spring-loaded plunger that lives in this tube right here, and it's open on this end. There's some constriction on this end. It can't go that way, but it can go that way. So once we clear this thumb safety out of the way, if there's a lot of spring tension in there, then sometimes this plunger assembly can launch out the back, so just be aware of that. There's two plungers and a spring, and there we go. Two plungers and a spring in here. And those can come apart, right? There's three parts here, and they can come apart, so be cautious of that. These also rust into place sometimes, so it's a good idea to occasionally take those out and, and, and clean that to make sure there's free movement with that part. So we're gonna set that off to the side as well. Now our grip safety is free to remove, and because because of the nature of the problem that we're having with this gun, we're gonna look and make sure that we don't have any big issues with this grip safety. It doesn't appear that, that we do. Now we could put a new grip safety in there and, and we've got a Wilson Combat grip safety that has a little bit higher bump right here, but I don't know that we're necessarily gonna need that. So we're gonna set it off to the side. Now we can pull this hammer out and the hammer is retained by this cross pin here. It's got a head on this side no head on this side, so that's just gonna come out. That hammer's gonna come out, or the pin's gonna come out, and the hammer and the hammer strut are gonna come out with it. So now we can remove our sear spring. And this spring here, this guy, uh, that powers your trigger return, it powers your sear disconnector, and it powers your grip safety. So those, all three leaves of that spring have a separate function. So we can set him off to the side, and now, the sear and the disconnector and this little lever are all held in place by this pin here. So we're gonna pull it out. We're gonna get our sear and our disconnector out. And that's the little lever that sticks up through, that sticks up through the top of the frame and pushes against this lever right here. So it pushes against that every time the grip safety is activated. So, uh, what we're probably going to do with this gun is we're going to replace that guy with a new part from Kimber, which is on the way. And just for good measure, we're going to replace that guy as well, um, just to make sure that we don't have a lot of wear. Now, alternately, can this can this safety be defeated? Yeah, it can. We can we can actually take this to take this part out. We would have to drift the slide out because it comes out that way. So I mean, we drift the. Uh, sight out of the dovetail because of spring and all that lives underneath the dovetail of that sight. So we'll have to take that sight out and pull this out through the top of the slide. And it can be defeated. Um, if you do that, you have to put a plate in behind, uh, next to this sear to take up this space here. Same, kind of the same way you defeat a Series 80 Colt. But this part we're going to replace it with a new part from Kimber. We're going to replace this from a new part from Kimber. So just to, while we're at it, while we're this far apart, we might as well take it the rest of the way apart, right? So we're going to take the magazine catch out next. And on a Kimber, again, it's an Allen screw. On most guns, it's a small uh, slotted screw. We're going to bring this about there. And when we turn this, when we turn that screw, what happens is three pieces here. There's, as you can see, it's in, a, it's in a slot here. So as we turn it, it's released. So we have a, a, screw, a little uh, lock, a screw, and the actual mag catch itself. And that's the same in Colt, uh, Springfield Army. Uh, that's all the same with those guys. And now 
the trigger and trigger bowl come out the back. So aside from uh, the parts that are more or less permanently affixed to this frame, it's all the way stripped through. So we have the, the four grip screw bushings that are threaded in and staked. We have the plunger tube, which it has two posts that go through the frame and they're staked from the inside. Now, another issue that you come across with 1911s, any of them, or any of them, that, that is not an integral unit, those stakes can come loose with time. And what'll happen is this, this tube, instead of being flat against the frame, it will tilt up. And when it tilts up, that plunger that we just took out of there can actually ride out of its spot and actually lock the grip safety, uh, or lock the thumb safety, rather, into one of the two positions. And then you have to you have to pull all that and then uh, replace and or restake this part into the frame. This ejector is also uh, pinned into the frame. There's a post. It, it, lay, it the part lays on the top of the of the frame here, and there's a post that comes down through there, and then it's cross pinned here. So um, there are several different types of ejectors. Uh, more some are more extended than others. Uh, some are way extended, like this far extended. And you can actually tune those to make the gun eject in the direction you want it to. So if you have wonky ejection patterns or a gun that doesn't eject uh, that well, uh, this part is replaceable and is actually tunable to an extent. So uh, this grip uh, safety horn right here is radius. This is Kimber's particular radius. The standard government model 1911 actually comes comes out considerably uh, like this, and the, uh, the grip safety radius won't fit on the standard gun, but it, it fits here. And I can't recall the last time we did it, but it, I mean we used to do a pretty good business installing this type of beaver tail grip safety onto a government style 1911, and we would actually radius this part of the frame to mate it up to the grip safety and then end up having to uh, finish this flush and uh, there's quite there's quite a bit to it but now even the inexpensive 1911s are coming with that radius uh, horn here for the grip safety so haven't had to do that probably in about well, 20 years or so uh, i've got the got the jiggling tool somewhere I'd, I'd actually have to go find it so um that's how to take the 1911 completely apart um, there's not a whole lot of drama in putting it back together. It goes back together exactly the opposite of, of how it uh, how it went in. So let's let's see if we can get it done. So on this particular on this particular trigger, we also have an over travel stop right here. It's adjustable with a hex screw or an Allen screw through the through the face. And this can actually be adjusted, it should be adjusted with the gun assembled because you have to try it and and turn it and try it and turn it. So uh, that's another problem you might run into on, on a gun that sometimes won't fire, won't drop the hammer, is that this particular screw has come out of adjustment. So typically we use a little bit, once we adjust it, we use a little bit of blue Loctite to keep that in place. So uh, when we do a trigger job on these guns, we actually take a stone and we run that stone through the uh, the track for this boat, this trigger boat, to ride in, in the frame. And when you fit it, when you fit one of these triggers, you also end up having to fit this top pad and this bottom pad to where the trigger the trigger shoe itself. There's not a whole ton of up and down movement, so you want that trigger to go just as straight back and forth as possible and as smoothly as possible without that upward and up and down motion that we see in typical production guns. So the trigger's in there. We're going to reset this guy. This spring, you can get lighter weight springs for the magazine catch. I'm not a big fan of those because the last thing you want is to dump your magazine during the string of fire. This little, this little screw has a notch, has a uh, little flange that fits in this notch, and that's what kind of holds this thing together. So we're going to reset this to go back into the gun. So we're going to push it in and then lock it in place as such. 
come back in behind install we're going to have and you can you can start with it all the way in and just put a little bit of pressure on it and then turn it as you're coming out with it and just kind of wiggle it until it drops into place like that. So now you have spring pressure on here and your trigger's caught. So let's assemble this uh, sear and disconnector outside of the frame. Now, if it's not a Kimber, it doesn't have that piece. It has the, uh, if it doesn't have a fireman safety at all, it, it won't have any of those. But if it's a Colt, it'll have um, a different style. So we're gonna assemble this outside of the frame to show you what the, uh, how these things fit. Okay. So the trigger, the, the back end of the trigger bow pushes against, pushes against uh, this disconnector and the disconnector in turn pushes against the back of the sear. So when the gun is cocked, and we'll put some pressure on, on this here like, like the spring was on it. It may be difficult to do like this, but let's see if we can fake it up a little bit. There we go. So that's what it looks like in the cocked position like that inside the gun, right? So when the, uh, when the trigger pushes against this, and it can't because there's tubes in the way, I should have assembled it on the other side, but this will be in the up position. Then the trigger pushes against the back of the disconnector, which in turn pushes against the back of the sear, which rotates it out of the way and allows the trigger to push forward. And then as the slide runs back and forth, that pushes this disconnector down. This notch in the slide is where the disconnector sits when the gun is in battery and it's fully, uh, fully closed. As the gun, the slide runs back, uh, backwards and then forward until it goes all the way back into battery, this disconnector is pushed down uh, beyond where that end of that sear is. So the, the hammer is going to run back to the cock position, but with that disconnector pushed down out of the way, there's no way uh, it can drop the sear. So that's, that's kind of the function of the, the disconnector in the gun. And then the leaf of this spring here is what pushes this back up into the engaged position when the slide is run all the way forward and that recess is there to allow the, the trigger to go up. Pretty ingenious design. One guess as to who uh, thought that up. But uh, once again, it's our, our old friend John Browning that developed this whole thing. So on this, uh, and I'm kind of not wanting to put it together until I get this part in, but The way, we, the way we typically do it is we would run, that's too fast. We'd run the, these two parts in to where they get them positioned right. And we're gonna put them in place here to where they sit just like that, to where the back of the trigger bow is against that disconnector, which is against the sear. And then we would actually run this piece up along the frame to where this, uh, the end of it came out the top of the slide. And then we would line it up and run this pin through it and then assemble the hammer and so on from there. So uh, some of the other things that we do with, this, with these guns is this, this spring here is one that's replaced quite often. You can actually tune this spring to a degree and you change, uh, you can change the tension of various things. You can put more tension on the grip safety by bending this guy out. You can bend uh, this middle uh, aspect of the spring to decrease your sear pressure. 
Uh, be very careful with that because it's very easy to get to where the gun will actually double and slip off a full cock with this uh, bent. I advise not bending the factory spring. If you're going to get a, a lighter tension spring, they're available already set up from Ed Brown or Wilson Combat or Cylinder and Slide or you know quite a few different manufacturers that do that. So that's what I would suggest. This is your, your trigger return component. This, this uh, leaf on your left is a trigger uh, return component. So that spring is typically replaced in a trigger job. The spring that lives inside here uh, is typically replaced in a trigger job. Typically, in coming from the factory, those are over 20 pounds. Uh, the spring is over 20 pounds of weight, uh, maybe even 22 pounds of weight. And they're available aftermarket down to as low as 17 pounds. So um, be careful with that also. If you go below 19, you stand the risk of getting light primer strikes on, on stuff with hard primers in it, especially uh, the surplus type ammo or wolf ammo or, or any of that type of stuff. So be careful with that. If you're going to uh, use this as a, a duty gun or as a self-defense gun, I wouldn't go below 19 pounds on that mainspring. Also bear in mind, when you change the mainspring, you need to balance that out with uh, the recoil spring too. So uh, one of the things with 1911s is uh, there's a lot of I, I guess bounce for lack of a better word when that side closes under spring tension so you have to make sure you have adequate mainspring to uh, to keep the sear uh, the sear spring all these springs have to balance out is what I'm struggling to to get out there otherwise you'll have the hammer follow to that half cock notch um, if you try to go too light down here and you have too heavy of a spring up here so it's a bit of a balancing act uh, on these guns not much not much really drops in on a 1911. Most of the stuff has to be fitted. Even if you get a drop-in sear and disconnector, uh, a lot of times these hooks have to be fitted. The hammer hooks have to be fitted to the sear um, in, in a lot of cases. Now, there are, <clears throat> there are some drop-in pre-fitted kits available that do a pretty good job, but most of the time they need to either have the relief angle cut or um, a little bit of, of touch-up done to make it a really crisp trigger job. Also fitting a barrel to these guns. That's filthy. So when you fit a barrel to these guns, let's put it in the slide so you can see what I'm talking about. So we're fitting a couple of different areas. We see here from the top of the slide, we see that we want this barrel hood to fit up into its notch in the slide and we want it to come all the way to the rear. Uh, we don't want it to, uh, I, I guess it needs to be a slip fit is what I'm, what I'm trying to come across. But it needs to come all the way up when the gun is closed. And that's a function of two things. That's a function of the length of this, of this link here. And that's a function of how well these locking uh, lugs fit into the notches of the slide. So there's some fitting that's done here. Uh, to the locking lugs on most barrels. Um, and the other part that typically needs to be fitted on the barrel is the bushing, how the barrel fits to the uh, bushing. So when you get the bushing, that will be fit to the barrel. The ID needs to fit to the barrel and then the barrel or the bushing needs to be fit to the slide. Now uh, you can buy a barrel and a bushing that's pre-fit from uh, just about all the barrel makers. And then the only thing you may have to do is fit this lug uh, that goes into the recess of the slide. So um, all of this is well within the, the range of a moderately patient person at home with decent hand tools. If not, you should probably find a, a pistol smith or a gunsmith that's familiar with the 1911 pistols. So anyway, that's our plan of attack on this gun. I think we've got it, uh, I think we've got it diagnosed what's going on with it. We're gonna replace the firing pin lock. Um, and uh, the firing pin lock inside the slide. So if you like what we're doing, uh, let us know if there's a particular model or a particular issue you want us to take a look at. We'll certainly give it a shot to uh, go over that. I know we've got some 870 stuff coming up with staking in uh, shell stops and what have you. So that'll be uh, upcoming in a future video. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let us know how we're doing. And thanks for watching.